Hello and welcome to Alumni Talks. The topic of our webinar today is the full-time MBA at EADA Business School, a top business school in Barcelona, Spain, um, and we'll uh, discuss how it can help you enhance your career. My name is Zornitsa and I'll be the moderator of today's session on behalf of Unimai. I would like to thank you all for joining us and to welcome our panelists from EADA Business School. Ella Boniuk, Program Director, Melissa Handley, Career Services Director, Leticia Rella, Associate Director of Admissions, and Daniela D'Agostini, Alumna Class 2019, currently a Global Brand Innovation Manager at SAT. We will start with an overview of what the EADA MBA offers to its students, what makes it stand out, and what are its main requirements towards candidates. Then we will continue with a panel discussion in which Daniela will share with us more about her academic experience and how it contributed to her career development. Your questions are very welcome. So if you have any, please write them down in the chat box anytime during the webinar, and we will take the time to address them in the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Um, before we start, let us double check whether everyone can hear us. If you can hear me well, would you please write a yes in the chat? Uh, okay, uh, all seems set, so let us go. I'll give now the word to Ella to present herself and the EADA MBA program. Okay, um, well, thank you very much, uh, Zornita, for this introduction. My name is Ella Boniuk, and I'm the director of the full-time international MBA program here at EADA. Um, and it is my pleasure to, to have this opportunity to tell you a little bit about our program um, today. So um, welcome to the presentation. Um, and we like to say that, um, you know, our international MBA program is an opportunity for you to rethink um, your um, future and to create a new one. Uh, and there are a couple of, um, things that I would like to point out uh, in our presentation today. So first of all, uh, our program is a full-time presential program. Uh, this is actually what the current classes look like. The picture on the left that you can see here is from our immersive um, hybrid uh, classroom that we have dedicated to our MBA participants. And the picture that you're seeing on the right is the presential classes that we have in our special leadership training center and I will tell you a little bit more what you can expect about that. Um, our idea is that we are ready for any circumstances that that occur so we have uh, opted to have a very fluid approach to the program in a sense that our main focus is on having presential classes face to face. We understand this is something that our participants really uh, appreciate and enjoy. But also we recognize that there will be moments um, when due to particular you know, health situations or restrictions, some individuals may prefer to join the classes uh, live online and, and hybrid uh, model. Therefore, we, we have um, a classroom integrated where the classes take place uh, presentially but we work always with Zoom, so if you're not feeling well or if for some reason you're not able to join us on that particular day, you can connect online and you can interact with your classmates and also with the professor and follow the class and, and um, engage and participate in class discussions, which are a key part of our program. Now, um, as you may have uh, heard, uh, uh, if you have done research on our, on our school, um, the, the mission of the school is uh, that we um, are, want to be a business school where people grow. And this is also very much a focus of our MBA program. We're um, uh, very much engaged in your per personal development um, throughout the year uh, of the program. Um, our MBA program is uh, a world-class uh, top ranked program. We are number 78 in the world, according to the Financial Times, uh, in the global MBA rankings that were published earlier on this year in, fe uh, in February. We're number 62 in the world, uh, according to the Economist ranking. And we also enjoy um, the AMBA accreditation, which certifies the quality of the program. And as an institution and also our program, we enjoy the EQUIS uh, accreditation um, for the school. 
Um, sustainability is, a, is one of the main pillars um, for the school and for our program as well. Uh, and we have been receiving, we, we are among the, the top schools uh, according to the positive impact rating for, for business schools. And we're also very pleased um, to be um, ranked among the top 40 Better World MBA uh, ranking programs according to the Corporate uh, Knights ranking that was published in 2020. Um, and international uh, programs or international community is quite wide um, at our school. So as we see your network, not only uh, as the network that you build within your class, I'm not going to read through these statistics, but you, you can have a, a general information overview. But we had uh, 55 nationalities among all of our master's program here physically present on campus uh, in this academic year in 2021. Um, and we're particularly proud of that given the current uh, conditions that, that we've been living. Um, in our program, we, we like to focus on uh, latest professional practices. We work with international fac faculty who have uh, a lot of professional experience. Um, therefore, the classes are very ap uh, applied. We like to work with small class sizes, um, uh, which means you know, 35 to around 40 uh, participants per class. We focus very much on uh, learning by doing. So we focus on providing you with challenges, life projects, and uh, as often as possible, we like to include corporate connections and invite guest speakers as well to the, to the classroom. Here uh, in this slide, you actually get a better picture of what the current uh, classroom looks like. And, and, uh, and this is one of your, our, our classes who are actually following the program at this moment. Um, in the in the school, and as well as a result, our program uh, focuses on three transversal themes: innovation, leadership, and sustainability. And we're pleased to offer you at the end of the program two specializations: uh, one that's in finance, structured finance and private equity, and the other one that's in sustainability and business impact. Um, this is a, a six seven week. Uh, program or specialization at the end uh, of the program, and I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit later. Um, this is uh, the format, or let's say this, the big picture structure of the program at a quick glance. Um, our mission is to instill, uh, our program's mission specifically, I should add, is to instill an innovative spirit and a holistic purpose of business in our participants. And, you know, we, we pride on equipping you with the right skills and tools and values to, uh, to build a more inclusive and prosperous society as future business leaders. Um, our program is divided into three trimesters. The first two trimesters um, are constitute the core of the program. They focus on management fundamentals, functional expertise, and advanced leadership. The third trimester is, a, is a kind of uh, the cherry on top. This is the one where you have an opportunity to specialize and also where you participate in an international um, trip. Um, and we believe that our program truly provides um, a journey of personal and professional transformation. Um, as an add-on at the end of the program uh, for the following academic trimester, you, you may also choose to do um, an international exchange program at, uh, abroad. We have about 30 different uh, partner schools. Uh, this is something optional and not everybody chooses uh, to do that. Now, what makes our program unique? Well, we have, um, we are the only business school in Europe that has its own dedicated uh, residential training center for leadership activities. Um, we're sharing here one of the activities that our participants get to enjoy. And we uh, dedicate quite a lot of time actually to, to helping you grow as a manager, as a leader, and to help you gain greater self-awareness. I will not read out through um, all of the components, but these are uh, examples of the different modules that we have. The majority of them take place in the residential training center, um, which has a beautiful location, as you could have seen um, in the other uh, in the previous slide. Um, the idea here being is there's a part of the program that you follow together as a group in very intimate setting, um, and you also have an opportunity to follow up with more personalized 
one-to-one um, -one executive coaching that is also uh, an option that we offer to you in our program. Now, one of the key things that I believe makes our program stand out um, from, from, from other programs is that we believe that um, innovation is no longer an option, but it is a must and that it is a mindset that uh, any manager, regardless of which functional area or position they're working in, needs to keep in mind. Therefore, we have um, uh, redesigned our program in such a way that innovation is part of the, the core of the program. And we actually start with helping you develop that mindset in the first trimester through the various courses that you see mentioned here on this particular slide. And, and we like to work with a mini case that um, is a live corporate innovation challenge. You learn the different tools, you learn how to apply them so that by the time the second trimester uh, comes, you're able to work on the kind of biggest challenge that you will have during the MBA, which is on your final project um, component. Um, and just to, uh, uh, to finalize on, on the program content side, uh, we, we obviously cover on top of the other courses that uh, you could see in the previous slide, we cover all the different uh, cross-functional areas of expertise. So you'll get a lot of different courses regarding strategy and marketing, finance, human resource management, operations and technology. Um, here, I'd like to highlight a, a couple of courses that are a little bit different. So managing digital transformation for us is part of the core. Um, we, we believe again, this is the result of, of the current circumstances we've been living through. And we also have a, a course that, that is called um, Global Tech Trends, and it helps you gain more insights into what's happening in technology and how technology will be changing industries fundamentally in the future. Um, uh, these are very kind of hands-on uh, courses with quite a different uh, methodology. Um, then um, we uh, like to bring kind of Asia to the door of our program. So our international trip, it's a one week experience where we enjoy a mix of company visits and also um, lectures and insights. Uh, we have a trip that takes us to Asia, uh, our destination in the last couple of years when we were able to travel has been Singapore and then this is the plan to continue. Uh, traveling there. And finally, um, as I mentioned before, the two strategic specializations, sustainability and business impact and structured finance and private equity. Um, this is where you go more in depth into learning about these two um, themes and you work with a real life client challenge. So we have different companies that come on board and provide a challenge that is relevant um, to, the, to the specialization you're studying. Um, and I think with that, uh, I've provided you with a very quick overview of the content of the program. I'll be happy to answer any questions later on that you might have on that. And I'll hand it over to Leticia, who's going to tell you a few words about the admissions process. Leti, over to you. Thank you so much, Ella. And I, I'm sure I will. Uh, I was seeing a little bit of your questions in the in the chat, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to answer uh, already the first question that uh, you guys wrote. And thank you for that because uh, it's uh, it gets dynamic, right? So regarding the admissions process, um, what are we requiring? Obviously, you have uh, three steps of the application process, which are described on, uh, on the on the down of the slide. The first part is an application form where we like to see a bit more, obviously, about your working experience. A minimum of three years is required, and the average in class is five to seven years. Obviously, what we ask is what type of responsibilities you've had, and so you must have a university degree. Regarding the, the test, and that, uh, that ends up one of your questions. Um, so we have two options. The first one is obviously we do accept GMAT, which will be a minimum of uh, 650 or equivalent GRE, but we also have our own online admission test. I'm happy to send you an um, example if you want so. After those two first steps, which is more uh, an assessment about your, your background, we really like to uh, know you better. And that's why you have two interviews, generally with me and with Ella Boniuk. So in that, uh, in that interviews, we go beyond, right? We understand, we try to understand who you are, 
besides your CV, besides your experience, besides your grades, what is your, your, your achievement, how this MBA is a fit. So with what uh, Ella just told you, you, you can have already uh, a sense about how important leadership and soft skills, your flexibility are, your interest into innovation and so on. In the next slide, I will show you more about uh, financing. So um, in, in financing, we have uh, well, the program fee, first of all. So the program fee is 39,000 euros. And that does include everything that uh, Ella Bonio was telling you about in terms of academical uh, uh, content, um, the, the content of the business trip, and the, um, the, the, the training centers, and also everything about uh, career services that Melissa will explain later. We do have a scholarship and early bird. So the, the early bird is almost over. Uh, we're going to have a 7% uh, discount, early bird discount on the 21st of May admissions round, which will be upcoming. And then we do have scholarship, which are all 25%. So to answer any other question that I saw in the chat, there's no full scholarship. 25% uh, is a maximum. Uh, we have a scholarship for excellent that can go up to 50%. In addition to that, should you need any other financing, uh, we are partnered with Prodigy Finance. So Prodigy provides loan for international students. Uh, I'm happy to provide the list of countries that are covered by Prodigy Finance. And uh, you can see there's two types of scholarships. Some of the scholarships are industry-based and other scholarships are uh, diversity-based. So uh, we cover all area of the world. And in that case, you, you, we ask you to present your experience and your motivation in a, in a scholarship admission letter. To apply to a scholarship, you first need to be admitted and enrolled. You have to have a positive assessment process. And then I will quickly go through uh, the last part, uh, which is about uh, life in Barcelona. So hold on a second, I will change the slide. Thank you. Life in, uh, in Barcelona. Um, EADA is located in the city center. I think Daniela can tell you more about that maybe later in the city center of a wonderful city of Barcelona. Uh, none of us here uh, are from Barcelona, so we can tell it. We're Barcelonian by heart. Uh, it's a very international city. Uh, it's a, it's, and it's a great city because it's international. It's a hub for innovation, but still it has its Mediterranean lifestyle. So it's very open. And to live the full experience, we are the only ranked business school located in the city center. And last, uh, last part before, before I hand over to, to my colleague Melissa, um, the, the elephant in the room, right? So what's going on in COVID? And I know that many of you will have some questions like that. I prefer to, to, to introduce it. Um, Barcelona at the moment, I mean, in Spain, we haven't been back into full confinement since last June. So uh, life is pretty much normal. I mean, there's, um, there's a curfew at 10 p.m. at the moment. Uh, hopefully it will change soon and uh, restaurants are open at lunch, for example, but you have uh, sports, you have uh, uh, cultural activities that are opened. And uh, as Ella Bonyuk was saying before, uh, the school has been opened and we have face-to-face -face classes since June. So uh, that's it for me. I will hand over to to the, the to Melissa Henley, which is the, the the career services director. So I'm pretty sure you have a lot of questions regarding careers and uh, post graduation um, development. So Melissa, all yours. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm just quickly about to share my slides with you. Okay. So um, welcome to, to the presentation again. Uh, thank you to my colleagues too. And what I just wanted to concentrate a bit on today was a very quick overview actually of careers since it's, it's also a hot topic and, and obviously in, in COVID times as well, we've all had to adapt, um, operate in different ways to make sure that the opportunities are still reaching obviously all of our students. Okay, very quickly, um, there are usually um, set in stone, so to speak, to um, different sets of interest from MBAs, those are who are looking for a career switch, and those who are actually looking to enhance their current career, let's say make a jump within an organisation, okay. Um, very basically, there's a cycle that we see common in, in our MBAs, 
which is when you join the program, obviously there's a lot of different things going on as Ella has just explained and also the attraction of Barcelona, which is an amazing city. But we do, since the day you start, we love you to actually start thinking about your career, okay? Because it is actually like a course in itself and takes a lot of preparation. Um, and really leaving it to the last month is not recommended at all. Okay, so what we do, um, you can see in the cycle, uh, basically start identifying, um, you know, build your CV, start reaching out to companies, start networking, then going more specifically into developing your network, focusing more on very specific key companies, start your applications, part three, accelerate applications, start interviewing, hopefully accept job offers at that point, and if not, intensify that whole process over the summer. Okay, this, this is obviously, um, you know, a very generalist explanation because different students work at different paces. There's also different industries to consider, such as finance and consulting, which start the whole cycle way before other industries. But this is in essence what you will need to do, okay, and what a team will guide you through. Now, how do we actually support you in all of this? Okay, um, in a nutshell and putting it simply again, careers helps with the preparation, the recruitment and the networking side. Okay, so we break this down into group training sessions for the entire class. Um, for MBA specifically, I would say there has to be a focus on interviewing skills, salary negotiation, and especially these days, how to do all of this online because it's very different um, interviewing on camera than it is in person. Okay, there are different skills um, required there. So we try and prepare you with all of that. Um, very valuable part of the service is actually the one-on-one -on -one career advising. Um, some of our students use this service more than once. Um, some of them who, for instance, may be going back into a family business might not need to use it. Um, but definitely it's your chance to have a one-on-one -on -one with a, your career advisor. So here you can practice interviews. Um, you know, if you're getting an interview, let's say on a Thursday and it's Tuesday afternoon and you want to run through, that's something your career advisor can help you with. Okay. Um, as well as defining career goals, everything that Ella was mentioning about the program content in Call Back Door on leadership um, is very much linked to your career because unless you really know yourself, unless you know your strengths, um, where you should be focusing, that really is the base for knowing yourself well and thus defining your career goals. Okay. On the recruitment side, um, we are currently collaborating with other top schools and our EFMD network in some virtual fairs. Okay, there's a series of those. We're doing individual company presentations. We're sending out tailored offers to the class. We are currently, um, just last Friday, closed a referral round where we shared uh, 300 company um, names of contacts with the class, asked them to apply, and then we refer them directly to the recruiters. Okay, this is an initiative we commenced actually uh, very much so in COVID last year and it worked really well. So we're continuing that this year, okay? A lot of companies got very creative as well in the last year and started doing challenges. So we, we do collaborate with those where we think they are appropriate because they can actually, some of them can be quite time consuming. So if a straightforward offer would do the trick, um, you know, we need to assess the, the amount of challenges we actually get involved in, but they're a great way of getting seen by recruiters, okay? Sector specific training, we have that via the consulting club. Um, we have a finance, external finance expert coming in to talk more about the industry. Same goes for the tech industry and also logistics and distribution, okay? Um, internships, Obviously with an MBA, uh, most of you would be going into full-time full positions, but it is a great opportunity for those of you wanting to explore that to get some very hands-on experience in a top company. Okay, so every year, yes, we do internship agreements as well with different companies. And last but definitely not least, this is extremely important. We have an amazing 
alumni network all over the globe. Um, Daniela, thank you so much because you're part of that network um, who are extremely helpful with current students. Um, not just linking our team up to the HR and talent acquisition teams in different companies all over the globe, but really in, in actually helping you um, if they've had experience interviewing in a company where you're about to be interviewed. Um, what is that role really like? Uh, what is the company culture really like? Um, and we massively appreciate our alumni network in that sense. Um, it's invaluable to have such a support. So this is definitely part of your networking and we would encourage you to, to practice that, to know how, how that really can be done in an appropriate manner and effectively. Okay. Um, I briefly mentioned just before the slide, we're running a couple of virtual fairs this year. Um, the full one obviously has already um, taken place in which we had a special focus on global MBA positions, but students are welcome to join any of the fairs. Okay, to network with the companies okay. and currently actually today in fact um, is the spring virtual fair series and yesterday and today are specifically dedicated to MBA and management positions within companies um, from an array of companies as you can see from the logos. Okay. Another thing that we've actually got going on more on an individual level, um, last week we had a company presentation and recruitment event with SAP, um, very loyal recruiter from EADA, and quite a few MBA um, students from the current class in that presentation. Okay. On Monday um, next week, we have Global Praxis. It's a management consulting firm here in Barcelona. Uh, they specifically target MBAs. Okay, so we do that in conjunction with the consulting club. Um, again, a recruitment event online. And the day after we have Motherson um, coming back to Ayada for the second time this year, they've already recruited um, students and they'll be coming back because they've opened more positions with the company. Um, again, they've been recruiting for several years with us. So um, for all roles and principally, I would say it's MBAs and masters in management students here with this company. Okay, um, very quickly, there's an array of online resources probably to highlight here for MBAs, MBA Exchange, which is a platform dedicated to MBA roles. Daniela knows this one, I think. <laughs> yeah, um, but again, an, an array of support there online. Okay, wanted to say a very final quick word here about alumni engagement. Okay. Um, alumni engage in, in various um, areas with EIDA, so one is, is with the network, uh, the career support. Obviously, they're also interested in keeping their lifelong learning um, up to date, so refreshing their, their knowledge. And continually in collaborations, um, fundraising, scholarships, and so forth. Okay. But particularly with careers, um, as you can see, what we do um, throughout the year, we hold um, meetups. These are alumni events over the globe. This year, we've had to move them online, but we're, we're actually very pleased because the attendance is more or less the same, which is fantastic. Okay, this Thursday, we actually, we have the one for um, the DAC region. So Daniela will be joining us again on Thursday. And here really, um, again, the, the help that alumni have provided to careers is invaluable. Um, through many of these meetings, offers are directly made to, to the current students and to the alumni community looking for a change, um, or they will help get our careers team in contact with you know, large multinationals, smaller companies all over the globe. Um, and it really, really helps there because alumni are fantastic ambassadors. Okay. So thank you very much for that um, presentation on careers. Now I'd love to um, introduce you actually to Daniela. I've been referring to her quite a bit throughout my presentation. So Daniela is from the MBA class of 2018-19. Okay. Um, coming over from Brazil to join the MBA. Right, so a long, long distance um, joining the MBA is actually um, also went on exchange to RSM 
in the Netherlands, just after doing completing the programme, Ella mentioned that this was an option, so Daniela uh, took advantage of this option, also landed a fantastic internship with uh, GSK, the MBA Esprit Marketing Internship in the Netherlands, and is currently in Munich as well, so uh, truly international experience here. Um, currently in Munich as Global Brand Innovation Manager with Essity, but along the way, um, like all MBAs, is also delving into um, the entrepreneurial side that you have within you, um, and also co-founded a company back in Brazil. So, um, you know, excellent. You've been very busy, Daniela. So um, <laughs> thanks for joining us. And Letitia is actually going to kick off the round of questions today yeah. um, with you. So uh, back over to you, Leti. Thank you so much, Daniela, for, for joining us. And it's uh, always a pleasure to, to see you, at least virtually now. Um, so I, will, I wanted to start with a very general question, which is back to your MBA experience, especially now that you've graduated and you, have, uh, you can see back to, to this experience with uh, a little bit of perspective. What would you say uh, made it special? What was the highlight of the MBA experience and what do you think made, made this MBA, this particular program unique? Sure, uh, so happy to be here and happy to share my experience. Uh, yeah, my MBA year at ADA, I can say was one of the best years that I had. It, it was a full combination of the career part, but also the, the personal aspects together in Barcelona, which makes a totally unique setup. And it was really a immersion, knowledge immersion within the faculties, my colleagues, and I believe really what makes EADA unique. And that's why I apply and, and, and started and did my MBA at EADA. It's this personal development that uh, Ella presented um, earlier. And that's something that really, um, as business are made of people like and and most of the business schools they just forget about people and they just trying to to put you in the same box like just shaping you to, to do this kind of uh pr profile and personality but EADA um really sees you as uh, it's kind of personalized and um, and, and don't put you in the same box. So developing your strengths with the leadership modules, with the coaching sessions, the learning by doing methodology, that really, really makes a difference. And I think my, my personal highlight with the MBA was the time that we went to Singapore um, with the entire class and also having and knowing this, this amazing country and their history and the, all the innovation uh, part uh, of that. It was really, for me, it was my highlight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, maybe we can go to the next question. Okay, Anna? so um, so my question I wanted to ask you was about the maybe methodology and your experience with the projects. Um, as you remember, uh, and you mentioned yourself as well, our focus on learning by doing methodology. So maybe you could give some examples and, and, and also talk about the teamwork and importance of of teamwork <laughs> during the program <laughs> and 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 you know any if you want to highlight anything about um you know the projects that maybe you were working on during the pod with a company mm -hmm. sure so yeah the learning by doing methodology is a reality since day one uh, i believe the first weeks um we had the innovation week um where we had to create a new company like a new business within three or four days in groups uh, and we didn't actually know anyone by then, so it was really a challenge. And what I learned there uh, with the design thinking methodology, uh, I still apply in my daily uh, work right now. I work with innovation as well. So for me, that week was amazing. And also throughout the, the course, um, the classes, all the faculty, they're encouraging you to, to learn, to share your experiences, not only you sit it, in the classroom, just listen. It's really cooperating and sharing experiences and putting this the theory into practice. And I also took part of the negotiation challenge. And as uh, as Ed Ella said, the, the POD, I took the innovation path, which we partnered with Media Markt, uh, which is a huge retailer, uh, German retailer, and and it was really 
important to see um it's, it was like a more as a consultancy project was which was really interesting and also with my final project my group also um partner with uh, an existing company so it's really up to you and 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 that gives you the the tools to to really encourage this learning by doing and the, the daily bringing into practice and getting to know companies and yeah and the teamwork question it's really important and i think it's it was one of my biggest challenges with the mba because you have people from not only from different countries but from different backgrounds and when you're working in a company you might have people diff with different countries but not actually with different backgrounds so you had lawyers scientists and business people cooperating to getting the same team so and, and this was a challenge but it was amazing to see the outcome how great and the, the how um, yeah great the, the outcome is because you have different perspectives and not only from the business point of view for example okay. thank you daniela i actually have the next question for you um, which we heard very briefly in when I introduced you, but if you could just tell us a bit more, please, about your post MBA career journey. Um, you know what what was what you found supportive um, during your time in EADA um, with regard to careers, mm -hmm. and how you feel that you know doing an MBA has actually helped in your professional uh, development post MBA. Oh, for sure. Yes, I wouldn't be here where I am today uh, without my MBA and, and without uh, other support. I was the one using a lot the career um, department in general, really going to the in, interview, mock interviews, curricular preparation and the company's events, uh, the open positions that you guys shared with us. I was always having a look and using the digital tools. And that's actually where I found my internship. I think um, as Melissa introduced uh, after doing the MBA. So I did my one year at EADA and I was, and I really wanted to take advantage of pursuing um, an exchange, which I did at, in Rotterdam at RSM. And, but between this time, um, some, some companies such as GSK, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, they provide um, a summer MBA internship. So it's only for MBA students to apply. Um, and you start the application like uh, six months before. So you just enter the MBA, you already have to have a look at the internships available. And I got, uh, accepted to uh, GSK internship in Netherlands. So, and after this, um, and which was my goal because I really wanted to change industries to pharma. And that was an opportunity to do so. And after my uh, internship, I went to my exchange period, which I finally graduate and, and wrap up my uh, MBA experience. And after that, um, I found a position here in Munich where I am right now, um, working for SAT, which is one of the biggest FMCG companies in the world. In the world. And I'm a global brand manager, uh, innovation manager, working with, yeah, bringing new products to the markets. And, and I really thank uh, the alumni community, because when I moved to Munich, I didn't know anyone, I didn't have any connections. As Melissa mentioned, I'm from Brazil, so everything was new. And I really reached out like through LinkedIn or through Ada, sending me contacts, and I really um, took advantage of that. And for my interview at SAT, I previously spoke to a guy that graduated in the master uh, course at EADA to understand the company culture and if he had could he give me any tips. So I really use and I'm still using, I'm still connected with EADA, uh, which is really great. I really appreciate. Ah, and my inter entrepreneurship uh, part, I opened a small business in Brazil with an EADA 
alumni that study with me during the MBA time, she moved back to Brazil. So she's leading from Brazil and I'm here from Munich. So that's that's because of Ada. So yeah, my whole experience after it's 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 really related to the MBA. Well, congratulations, Daniela. It's uh, very impressive and uh, and it's uh, it's very impressive to see so many countries as well. You're a uh, truly global uh, profile. Um, and you were mentioning, right, the, the importance of making the most of this networking. Mm -hmm. And also you, you briefly mentioned uh, before that diversity is not only in terms of nationalities as well in terms of background and that what enriches the MBA experience, but as well can be challenging. So to prepare our, our audience, and I see that the audience is very international and I invite you guys to put as well your nationalities maybe in the chat room so we can have an idea. Um, but to prepare uh, our audience, can you share a bit more about the class profile and maybe a couple of anecdotes about this diversity and how it enriches and how it's key of your MBA experience and the, and the networking, as you were mentioning, in terms of uh, post MBA. Yeah, it was really, really diverse. Uh, and it was really interesting to, to see the, the discussions with different backgrounds, best perspectives, and also from different countries' perspectives. For example, during the MBA, it was election time in Brazil my country and we were discussing this and then one guy i think he was from austria he just said but why don't you do this like just don't vote to the person just take this person out if if it, it's not good for the country and i was like but that doesn't work that's not how it works in my country and i never thought about those things because you just take things for granted from your country from your culture and and it's extremely interesting to see the other perspectives and even anecdotes like a girl from iceland i didn't know i learned that they have an app where you can see and check if uh, people are related to you maybe you have a cousin that you don't know so you might not get into a relationship with this person which is quite funny for me coming from a big country and so it really makes uh, the whole experience a different experience, like much more uh, enriching and and unique. Okay, and um, I would like to follow up with you now on the leadership development modules mm -hmm. <laughs> and the experiences you've had there. Um, you've mentioned quite a lot of things about your sort of professional growth and, and career development. Um, what about your personal goal, uh, growth? How do you feel the MBA has changed you on a personal level? Um, maybe you want to share some things, but without revealing secrets, Daniela, please, <laughs> about the, 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 the leadership modules and some of the experiences you've had. Uh, and also finally, you know, it's been a few years now since, uh, since we had the pleasure to, to enjoy the closing ceremony together. So I guess also if you could include a little bit of reflection on, okay, what's happened in those last two years? Have you been able to apply, um, you know, the various concepts and tools you have learned um, and the changes that happened to you on a, on a personal level? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I think during the leadership modules in Kobato, um, it was really a, a deep dive into yourself. So not only looking at your career, but actually like as your purpose, like in life. And that sometimes we don't stop to think about that. You just start working and you don't ask yourself, why are you working for this company or why are you working with this position, etc. And And for me, this was a moment of reflection and that shaped, um, my next steps, for example, of opening, starting my own business, that's something that I didn't have the courage even to try. And really the, the, the modules helped me to realize, to get more confident on myself and, and to see other points of view and to, to, to have this um, trial and fail mindset that, like I didn't grow up like this, like in my country, it's really like, okay, you need to follow this, this and that. And so that was really, really great. And 
and also in terms of um, teamwork, um, really understanding the the one the, the strengths by the people, and that's something that we did uh, during, throughout this this leadership models. Really to understand the strengths of your peers and focus on that, and making the the team the the team working even better. And the outdoor activities for me, they were the highlight. Um, I'm not spoil <laughs> giving any spoiler here, which ones, but it was um, really like, I'm not very, I'm not very brave in terms of not even adventurous. And, and, and after the outdoor activities, um, you do realize how important uh, the teamwork it is in practice and with life um, examples. So it was really, really enriching. Excellent. And yeah. linking in what you're saying, right, with uh, trial, trial and uh, fade mindset and the teamwork, I think it's uh, linked to my final question before we open up to, to the audience for, for the questions to you. Um, but right now, if you can give them to, to, to everyone listening to us today any final tip, and I think this mindset you're, 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 you already mentioned is, is one of them. Uh, if you think back at your experience, right, at the same moment of thinking of this next big step, uh, and if you look back to yourself a, a few years ago before uh, taking this, uh, undertaking this MBA adventure, what would be your tip to, to yourself back then and to the audience then today? Well, I will tell myself to do exactly what I did <laughs> some years ago. Just go for it. And then the MBA time, uh, it's an amazing time where you're going to open your mind and your career, your doors. You're going to open so many doors that you don't even imagine. And I, that's, that was something that I was afraid before because I already had a career back there I was like okay but I'm closing this door but I'm actually I opened so many other doors that I didn't imagine so I really encourage um, to apply and to have this this time in your life and Barcelona is an amazing city Eada is within the in the city center which makes all the setup completely uh, different and special and yeah, tips, uh, I think it's just just be yourself, be honest and, and really understand how the MBA, how, what are you expecting from the MBA and what the MBA can expect from you as well. So I think uh, I really encourage to, to, to try it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, Daniela. Uh, I see Zornitsa is here, so she will open now the, 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 the questions, right, from the audience. Yeah, great. Thank you very much for this lovely discussion. I think you managed to answer most of the questions that were asked in terms of uh, entry uh, requirements, uh, scholarships as well, internships. Uh, I remember Daniela sharing her experience in doing an internship on her own. There was just uh, one question about uh, whether the program is available in online mode. So maybe you should tell us in general, how, how did the, the COVID situation change uh, the mode of studying or did it change it at all? And what are your plans about the pr program's format in the future? Okay, so I'm, let me take this question. Um, again, like I mentioned in my presentation, the, the dominant uh, mode of delivery of our program is face-to-face. Um, but we have a hybrid setup in the classroom. What this meant for us in practical terms, for example, um, talking specifically about the first uh, uh, trimester of this year, so October till December to 2020, we had uh, quite a few participants who had were facing restrictions when it came to travel. They were not able to arrive to, uh, in the cities uh, uh, to start the program in presential format. So they started it in uh, live online. We like to call it live online because you connect live to the classroom and you have this opportunity to interact with your um, classmates and your professors. Uh, you continue with the work in teams. You do that in a virtual mode. Having said that, um, by the end of November, uh, you know, everybody uh, arrived to the city and joined us in presential format. So we do have the option of people joining for certain parts of the program in virtual setup, but this is not an online program and we do not recommend it taking it 
that way. I don't know if you want to add anything, Leti. No, I totally agree. And I think you explained very well for us a live online is um, to make sure that we are as flexible and adaptable to any situation you might have, especially when traveling and the delays. So you don't, you have no worry at all. And you know that you won't miss off any class, uh, whether you have to stay home or uh, have any delays, but the program is, um, is, is, is a face-to-face -face and that actually what our students are looking for uh, when they apply to, to Ella Business School is something that our students are, are uh, willing to have, which is this interaction and this uh, dynamic that Daniela explained so well with the, with the classmate, which is possible in the live online. And you, you could see that in one of the pictures of the, of the presentation. You're part of the group, you have a big screen. We have invested a lot in technology to make it totally fluid between online and offline worlds. Uh, but the, the, the purpose of our class is obviously that, uh, that you can come at what point in the first trimester and, and attend with everybody else. Yeah, great. Thanks a lot, Ella and uh, Letty, for elaborating on that. We have one uh, more question, first of comment. It's a great pleasure to listening to you, Daniela. I would like to know more about the MBA journey and how you get the courage to complete this experience. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the courage. Okay. Yeah. I, I've, I, I don't know how I get the courage, but everything was really fluid. Uh, yeah, the, all the time I had the support. Uh, if I had any issues like personal issues i reach out it was super open and, and flexible in this sense and also with i really use a lot the, the support that ada provided as i mentioned with the career department with ella um and with the exchange internship i really went uh, really dive deep into the mba experience at all like itself um so i yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't have the perfect recipe how which courage you should have, but uh, I think I, I really um, encourage you to, to, to try and, 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 and to take it. Thanks. And one more question from me, because, uh, you know, okay, you made the decision to do an MBA, but how did you choose uh, EADA? Like, mm -hmm. what, what, made, what made you go for, for EADA Business School? Yeah, uh, exactly. I think I, I mentioned at the beginning what made me uh, choose the other was this personal development part, uh, which I didn't find in other universities, um, in other business schools. So for me, that was the most important part because we know nowadays that companies, well, not maybe not only nowadays, but companies are not looking only at your hard skills because everybody, mm -hmm. you can copy, you can learn. So they really focus in your soft skills and that's where your personal aspect um, becomes extremely important. And for me, that was something that I was looking at as my next um, career step to develop with myself. Great, uh, thanks a lot. I, I think we managed to, to cover um, all of the questions that were related to the MBA, to the international MBA. Um, I thank you all for your time uh, to answer these questions and to who attended this webinar, to everyone who attended this webinar. We hope it had helped you to make your decision about applying for the international MBA at EADA Business School. On behalf of you and my team, we would like to wish you success in your academic journey and professional one as well. Thanks a lot to Ella, Melissa, Leticia and Daniela. It was really uh, wonderful to meet you and to learn more about uh, the, the enriching experience of the International MBA at ADA. We'll be looking forward to staying in touch. And that's all from me. I wish you a wonderful day. I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much, Zornitsa, and thank you to the audience. I just last left my, my personal email. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions, so uh, you might want to get in touch with me if you have any further questions about anything, the program, financing, or, or the admissions process. And uh, well, thank you once again, especially to, to Daniela today to, to join us and to uh, explain so well uh, about your experience. It was very, very inspiring. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. 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 Thank Melissa. You. Bye. Bye bye. And we look forward to seeing you in Barcelona then. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> bye. Bye bye.